Hello and welcome to the Inverex Solar Energy Pit Site Show. Now, England are staring at that whitewash, of course, for Pakistan. A lot of disappointment all round for Babar Azam as well. But uh, I guess England are going to be mighty pleased going back because they've already won the series. But to win 3-0 is going to be pretty epic. I've been joined by Bazit Khan and an unusually chirpy Nasser Hussain. <laughs> Nas, thanks for joining us uh, at the Pit Site Show. Um, question to you, when you were boarding that flight from England, did you ever think that England is going to whitewash Pakistan in Pakistan for the first time ever? No, absolutely not, because history tells you that it's a very difficult place to win, really. England had won two test matches out here. They'd only lost two, but they'd only won two. There's a lot of draws in there. So you look at that Australia series. I thought England would win it. I said it at the time. I just thought England had too much and the brand and style and the momentum they had under McCullum and Stokes. I thought they would win it 1-0, 2-0 if they go on. There's still a bit of cricket left here. If they go on and win 3-0 tomorrow, that will be a serious, serious achievement for Stokes and his team. Not because of the batting. I always thought Basball on these pitches would be successful, especially with no Afridi, uh, no Nassim Shah after the first test. Getting 20 wickets on these surfaces, to do that three times running, that's quite brilliant. You spoke about Basball. It seems like the flag bearer of Basball has been Harry Brook. You know, you, uh, we saw that masterclass by you at the top as well. What do you think makes him so special that he's able to adapt in different formats? You know, we've seen him in white ball, but he's almost striking at the same rate as we've seen him in uh, in white ball in the red ball format. Yeah, because he's grown up with uh, the fundamentals of batting for a long time. He's a Yorkshireman. He loves batting long. He likes being in the middle. He's hungry for runs. He doesn't change his tempo or his style. I thought this was probably his best hundred because it was a slightly trickier pitch with the spinner. And he was also in a slightly trickier situation. In Pindi, you know, there were 400s in that first inning, so he was coming in with momentum. It was a second innings 100, trying to set up a declaration in the last game. This was his best 100. He's a fabulous player. He's undroppable now, um, and he will play all formats. That was the shot of, of the series for me. Um, he's an outstanding talent. I quite like how he just keeps it simple. I like to bat. I enjoy batting. I think we'll see him batting for a long time for England. Somebody like Rehan Ahmed, I mean, is it is it premature to say that England have found a second spinner in the form of Rehan Ahmed at this point of time? I think we mustn't go over the top. If he had bowled poorly here, I don't think we should have said, oh, what a useless selection, why have we picked Rehan Ahmed? And if he's bowled well, we mustn't say, well, he's the next Shane Warne. He's somewhere in between. He's still learning his craft, but I'll tell you what, kidding. Barbara Azam out, getting Mohamed Rizwan out and getting Pfeiffer on debut um, here in Karachi with your old man watching with all the history of the old man and mum and dad and family. He said the other day on debut was his best day of his life. I think you've just beaten that round. It's, um, it's such a good story. Forget what he's got in the future. It's still a work in progress, but it is such a good story for him and English cricket. From a Pakistan perspective, mm. Bazid, I mean, extremely disappointing uh, result. They've already lost the series. Um, and even from somebody like Babar Azam, you know, him as a captain, I think he'd be really disappointed. I mean, what's been the most disappointing thing for you from whatever you've seen in the series so far for Pakistan? Well, the most disappointing thing for me is not not the result in the end. Yes, the result is very disappointing. But the fact that of the matter is that England define the way the test would go every time England define the way it was going to be played. That That is something I've never seen before. Um, for one side to actually decide how the test will play out or how, how every session will be played out is phenomenal. The way that they've imposed themselves on the test series, that, that, that Ravel Pindi test match, I don't think any other side would have been able to win that. But but for them to do that, Pakistan didn't have anything to counter them throughout the series. We say that Multan test was very close, but again, that first day the ball was spinning and they got to 280, which I thought was, was a very good score. So Pakistan not being able to then come back or, or counter punch them, that is the most disappointing part of it all. Nas, you said on commentary that, you know, Babar Azam's captaincy, you spoke about that, how it's been slightly more disappointing from a Pakistan angle. but. What's been lacking for you when you see him as a leader out there? Listen, I think Barbara Azam is a fine captain. I'm not saying they should change from Barbara Azam. Don't change unless you can change for the better. What I'm saying is that Ben Stokes has captained and out-captained him in this 
series. Make no mistake of that. Ben Stokes has been proactive. He's been changing his bowlers. He'll do things out of the box. Small things with his field settings. He'll keep his, his fielders up for Leach and set his fielders back for Ayan Ahmed. Barber keeps his fielders out for a lot. There was a top edge sweep when Brook went from 49 for 51 and Fahim Ashraf was right on the boundary. Stokes would have had him 20 yards in. The catch would have been taken. Root bowls up front earlier this, this after tea. Root gets the wicket of Fahim Ashraf. Mm. Barber doesn't turn to his part-time spinners at any stage. It was just two bowlers, two spinners. His hands have been tied behind his back because his talismanic bowler has Shaheen Shah Afridi. We saw that against Australia. We see that in these conditions. He's the man. He's the, he's the heartbeat of the side. He's not been there. So don't judge a captain just on results. Judge, judge him also on what he's had available to him. So I think Barber can learn. As, like a batter, you can learn. As a captain, you can learn as well. You can always improve. Look how Stokes has been going on about, about it. I learned from Stephen Fleming. Everyone used to say to me, I learned from Australia. Australia had Warner McGrath. They had Gilchrist and Mark War and Steve War and Langer and Hayden. I learned from Stephen Fleming. Why is New Zealand, with the squad they've got, keep playing everyone and beating everyone and winning, going through to ICC semi-finals? What's Flem doing so well? So always try and learn, even as a captain. Apart from captaincy, what do you think has been the downfall in, in this Pakistan side? What, what has brought, him, brought them here? It's a good question. It's a combination of things. Obviously, injury with fast bowlers. Fast bowlers are like gold dust, so those two injuries were massive. Harris Ralph as well. I'm not sure Pakistan have selected properly as well. Abra Ahmed. How can Abra Ahmed not play the first game? Anyone with a bit of a cricket brain should know the mystery of the lad will, for a start, will get you a couple of wickets. So Abra had to play that first game. But just the batting lineup. I'm not a massive fan of bits and pieces cricketers. Test match cricketer, you have to do one discipline well. Either the batting or bowling. One of them, you have to be a genuine player in. So Pakistan have tried to fill in the gaps with six, seven, eight, that bat a bit, bowl a bit. And at this level, they get found out. Baz, mm. just touching upon what mm. Nas said, you know, um, just in terms of selection, you brought in Fahim Ashraf as an all-rounder, genuine all-rounder, but he ended up bowling only, what, three overs in the whole game. Yeah, you, you look at Fahim Ashraf, you look at Salman Aga, you're playing him as, as a batting all-rounder. He doesn't get a bowl sort of today before he, he bowled 11 overs in, in two test matches. So that's barely enough. That's not even touching the surface. It, it, is, it is a problem. I think the resources that Barber had, or, or he didn't use them either. And, and then the selection yo-yoed really. You went sort of three all-rounders in that Multan test and then you went back so the selection also yo-yoed and and the other thing that that I feel Pakistan now has to look at is depth he's talked about Shine Shah Afridi yes Shine Shah Afridi has, has a, is, is not available but then who do you go to first test match you have four debutants three of them bowlers and and these bowlers so Muhammad Ali has come off a back of couple of really good seasons but then you think on these pitches, do you need pace? You look back at first class cricket, is there anybody who's putting his hand up? No. So the depth is what matters. There's just one more thing I'd like to add. It's very bittersweet if tomorrow Ben Stokes wins. It'll be so bittersweet for this man on my left. His <laughs> only claim to fame was a series victory in the dark in Karachi. But the, but the upside <laughs> is that this is the last day I'll see you for a very, Correct. very long time. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Just brought that in once again. Nice one, Nas. Nice one. Um, key takeaways um, for you from this tour. Obviously, we've had a lot of fun off the field as well. Yeah, it's been it's been thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable. I think you've called me Mr. Miserable off the field for the last <laughs> couple of days. I've absolutely loved every second of it. Honestly, we've had so much fun. We've had fun in the com box. But just generally, in and around the hotels, I cannot tell you the amount of people that come up to you and say, you know, um, thanks for coming over. As if it's, it's, it's not a job, it's not a chore. It has been great fun. We've waited 22 years, myself and Athers. It has been brilliant. And the cricket's been really good as well. So thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope we come back 
much more often than we have. I hope a load of countries come out here because Pakistan is a great cricketing nation. Well, we've also got another highlight of the tour for you, which we've lined up, of course, apart mm. from all the memories that we've had. Mm. I think, Baz, this one, the masterclass mm. by Nasser on how to play the short ball. I mean, th this is just quite incredible, Baz. Yeah, he's been nicknamed Sir Don. <laughs> And he's been doing masterclasses every day with Ruj. That's his suggested that short ball masterclass was one of his best. This is how he plays it. So remember the sweep shots and whatever he's done, it puts so much doubt on that. I'm never trusting you or Atherton again, ever. Well, I think it's been a fantastic tour and it's been an absolute pleasure having you, Nasir. I'm sure the people of Pakistan are incredibly grateful. I know you said that you hear that a lot, but I think we're all really grateful. and. Absolute pleasure. She's speaking for herself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll keep the pleasantries out of the way for now because that's not how we roll in here. But yeah, once again, thank you so much for being here in Pakistan. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed your trip. Thanks for having us. It's been an absolute pleasure. All right. You heard it from uh, Nas himself. He's had a great tour here. And England has had a great tour here as well. They're looking to be sealing the series completely 3-0. I'm sure Pakistan will be looking back and reflecting on a lot of things.